Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel and in this um, video I'm going to be answering a question from the Solomon B P3 formerly known as C3 papers from the LXL collection and this question is also corresponding this question number five from that Solomon B paper it also corresponds to question number eight from my end of topic worksheet on functions and graphs for P3 um, which have been requested by one of my students at school to answer. Now, he asked me for part B, but I'm going to go through the whole question just for completeness sake. Now, part A, we're asked to express f of x in the form a times x plus b squared plus c. So basically, we have to complete the square. So we have f of x equals. Now, when we complete the square, okay, it starts off like this. You've got 2x squared plus 4x plus 2. The way I like to complete the square is as follows. I'm concerned about making the x squared into um, have a coefficient of 1. I need the x squared to have a coefficient of 1 in order for me to co complete the square. And I focus on these two terms, the x squared and the x term. So I, if I take out 2 from the x squared term, I'm going to have x squared. And that's kind of fulfill my objective. But then now what I have to do is I have to divide this term by 2 in order for it to be the same as above. I'm not starting to complete the square yet, I'm just preparing this to complete the square. Then I'm going to close this bracket. Now, um, that's the way I do it. Some people do it differently. That's how I, I would do it. So I've basically taken out the 2 from uh, being like a factor of the x squared. And I don't care whether 2 is a factor of the x. It happens to be, but I don't care. It could have been a 3 here, could have been a 5 here, could have been a 7 here. Whatever I do, is I have to divide that by 2 so that when I expand this bracket, I'll get exactly the same thing. They have to be exactly the same because f of x equals this and f of x equals that. They must be equal to the same thing. So this is this has exactly the same value as what's above it. If you expand it, you get the same thing. But I'm changing its form. I'm, I'm starting to get ready to complete the square. Now, once I have got rid of the coefficient of 1 from the of, of, of other than 1 from the x squared, now I'm ready to start completing the square. So I'm going to write my 2 there. I'm going to write a bracket, make it a bit longer. And then I'm going to put the plus 2, which is hanging on the outside. I'll deal with those, those later. Let me just complete the square for what's inside here. So I know I'm going to have a bracket, which is going to be squared, which is our objective to end up with this squared bracket. I know this is going to be x plus a half of this coefficient. So it's going to be 1. Okay. And now if I was to expand this, I'm going to get x squared plus 2x plus 1. I don't want the plus 1, so I've got to take away 1. Okay, if I expand this, what's inside this square bracket, it will give me exactly the same as what's inside that square bracket. No difference. This will be x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 1. So the 1 and the minus 1 cancel out, and you're left with x squared plus 2x. So these two, these lines are all equivalent. They're exactly the same. Okay, you can say that they're all identical. All right, they're all identical to each other. Now, I'm almost done now having it in this form. What I need to do is just multiply that 2 with these terms and then combine these two terms together. So I say f of x is equal to, or is identical to. So 2 times this bracket, I'll just write it as 2 next to this bracket. So 2 times x plus 1 squared. 2 times minus 2 is minus 2. And then you've got a plus 2. So now what's going to happen is this minus 2 and the plus 2 cancel out. So we're left finally with f of x is equal to 2 times x plus 1 all squared plus 0. There's nothing added to it. So here we can see the c is 0. Now, it doesn't tell us to write down the values of a, b, and c. If it did, we could do so. We'll say a equals 2 and b is equal to 1 and c is equal to 0. But it doesn't ask us to do that. It just says express it in this form, which we have done. So that's part a completed. So you've got 2 times x plus 1 all squared. Now, for part b, it says describe fully two transformations which will map the graph of y equals x squared where x is greater than or equal to 0 onto the graph of y equals f of x. Okay, so one thing that we've got to mention here is that they gave us this information after the graph, which is important for us. Maybe not in part A, okay, but in other parts of the question, it will be important. This tells us that x is all real numbers. However, x is going to start from minus 1, and it's going to be all the values of x greater than minus 1. Okay, that's where the... Um, this, that's the domain of this function. The x values you can put in here are only from minus 1, including minus 1, and above minus 1. 
Anyway, that's a side point. We'll come to that later. So it says, describe two fully two transformations that would map the graph of y equals x squared, where x is greater than or equal to zero, onto the graph of y equals fx. So y equals x squared, if you draw, if x is greater than or equal to zero, will look something like this. You're only de dealing with the positive part of it, so it'll look something like this. And we want to see what transformations cause this to become uh, y equals uh, 2 times x plus 1 squared. Okay, so basically what's going to happen is you're going to first of all deal with what's inside the function. So first of all, you've replaced the x. So the first thing that's happened is you've got f x plus 1. You've replaced the x with x plus 1. Okay, so you and that, that gives you um, y equals x plus 1 squared. Okay, and that is the first thing that happens. That is a translation. Is inside the function. That's a translation of, and you're going one unit to the left, and it's only the x values that are, uh, are affected, so it's minus 1, 0. So when you make a change inside the function, okay, like here, you've basically replaced the x bit by x plus 1, okay, you basically... Um, affecting the x values and when you add one inside the function you move one to the left so it's a translation of minus one zero this is actually a fully described trans transformation you've explained what type of transformation it is and you've given a full description of it this basically means a shift of one unit to the left you could write that in words if you want you can say translation of one unit to the left or translation of minus one units in the x direction you can describe it in many ways but this is a nice way to describe it it's, it's like, you know, this is a, as a vector, it's horizontally moving left, to, you know, to one space, and it's not moving up or down. Okay, that's for the first part. Now, the second part is where you've got two times a function, because you've got basically two times x plus one squared. So, remember, we've got f of x equals two times x plus one squared. So, the second thing that's happened is you multiply the whole function by two. So, you've got two times f x plus one basically okay so you replace the function by uh, the x in the function by x plus one and then you've multiplied the whole function by two so this is something which is affecting the y values okay so this is called a vertical stretch of factor two because you're now multiplying the whole function by two so that affects the y values and if you're multiplying that basically you're multiplying all the y values by two so this is called a vertical stretch so you have to describe it as a transformation so it's a vertical stretch of factor 2. Okay, vertical stretch of factor 2. And that's fully describing the transformation. You're talking about being a stretch in the vertical direction, and you've got the scale factor. So this is the two transformations which take place from y equals x squared. That gives us to y equals 2 times x plus 1 squared. So basically, the graph of this will basically go one space backwards. So you'll be at minus one, and then, you know, it's going to be a stretch. So it's going to do stretch like this. And if you want to find out, for example, where it crosses the x axis, the y axis, you'll put y equal, you'll put x equals zero into here. So that's going to be crossing at two. Okay, it's going to look something like that. Okay, if you just left it as y equals x squared, when x equals, um, when if you left it as just um, x plus one squared without the two factor, then it would go cross at one. That's how it would cross before that. Before you did the stretch, it would have crossed like this, okay. But you did the stretch; it's now going to cross here at two. But this will stay at, at, at zero. So this is just a little introduction about the sketching. But the question is actually asking for these two points. Okay, this is point one, and this is this is the second transformation. So it says here: describe fully two transformations which will map the graph of y equals x squared onto the graph of y equals f of x. So first of all, you do a horizontal trans translation of one unit to the left and then a vertical stretch of factor two. Those are the two transformations which will take us from y equals x squared to y equals x plus one squared multiplied by two. Remember, we always start with what's inside the function, okay, and then we move to what's outside the function when you do combinations of transformations. Okay, then it says find an expression for the inverse of fx and state its domain. Now, in this question, Sometimes they give you this question without mentioning stating its domain, which you should do anyway. Okay, you should do anyway. First of all, we've now rearranged f of x and made it into the form that we require, which was 2 times x plus 1 squared. Okay, so we want to find the inverse of this function first. And we know that the domain of this function 
as I mentioned in the in the question, is x is greater than or equal to? I think it was was it minus one? Yeah, minus one. That was the domain of the original function. Okay. Now we need to find the inverse. So the first step is to call it y equals. And when we're finding the inverse, we're basically um, swapping the y and the x-axis around. Okay, that's what we're doing when we find the inverse. So we're going to call this x equals 2 times y plus 1 squared. Now I'm going to make y the subject. So the first thing I will do is I will divide both sides by 2. So I'll have x over 2. And, and then that's going to give me y plus 1 all squared. And then I'm going to... Um, yeah, then I'm going to take this, the square root of both sides, and I'm going to take the positive square root of both sides. So I have x over 2, square root equals x, y plus 1. And then I've got y plus 1, or so y, sorry, is equal to, continue over here. I'll have y is equal to the square root of x over 2 minus 1. And now, if we think about it, the domain of this function this inverse function. So this is inverse function. Inverse function f of x is equal to the square root of x over 2 and minus 1. Now the domain of this function is the same as the range of the original function. Now if you think about the drawing we made here, the range of this function is when y is greater than or equal to 0 because it stops there. It carries on forever this way. So the domain of our function here is going to be also x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so the, the range of our original function is the same as the domain of our inverse function. So if we were to draw this, as, we, as I just mentioned, it would be one unit to the left, and then it would be vertical stretch, so it's going to go through here. But you can see the range is from y equals 0 upwards. Okay, so the range is like from this, and it actually touches this point. So we're going to have y is greater than or equal to 0. We know it touches this point because it says x is greater than or equal to minus 1. So the function actually starts from minus 1 itself. Okay, If it said greater than minus 1, then this would be y is greater than 0 because the minus 1 point, therefore the 0 would not be included in the range. Okay, So that's the domain of this function stated clearly. And this is the, the inverse function of f of x. So that's part c. Now part d on the next page. It says, sketch the graphs of y equals f of x and y equals inverse of f of x on the same diagram and state the relationship between them. Okay, so y equals, the first one was 2 times x plus 1 squared. That's in, let me write it as f, f of x. So this is the original function. And the inverse of f of x was the square root of x over 2. The square root of x over 2 minus... Let me just make sure, what was it? Minus 1. Okay, minus, whoops. Make sure that's clearly outside the square root sign. Uh, minus 1. And this had a domain of x is greater than or equal to minus 1. And this had a domain of x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so now, if we were to sketch these on the same graph, Let's make our axes. Okay. So the first one, as we saw, it's going to start from minus 1. Okay, when x equals 0, you can see, you're going to have 2 times x plus 1 squared equals 0. So you have x plus 1 squared equals 0. So x plus 1, okay, is equal to 0, you could say twice. So x equals minus 1. This is called a repeated root. So if it could continue, it would, it would turn at this point. And when y equals 0, and y equals 0 for this function, you're going to have um, 2 times, sorry, that's when x, well, this is when y equals 0, sorry. When x is, the, x is equal to 0, sorry, I just made a little hash of that. The first one, of course, was when y equals 0, not when x equals 0. When y equals 0, you can equate the whole thing to 0 and find the x-intercept, which is minus 1. And when x equals 0, that's when you can find the y-intercept. When y, x equals 0, you've got y equals 2 times 1 squared, which is 2. So we can see that it crosses the y-axis at 2. Uh, it's going to look something like this. I'll continue on that way forever. Okay, so that's the original function. Now, the inverse function, 
which is this one, um, what you'll notice about inverse functions and original functions is that the x and y coordinates swap around. So for the inverse function, so if you have y equals f of x going through the point um, minus 1, 0 and 0, 2, then the inverse function, they basically swap over. So it's going to be going through 0, minus 1 and 2, 0. So this will go through 0, minus 1 and it will go through 2, 0, the inverse function. And it will look something like this. Okay, so the original function looks like this and the inverse function looks like that. And basically, you'll notice, if you sketch properly, that they are reflections in the line y equals x. And that's what they're telling us. Um, to te that's basically what they're trying to, to get here when they say state the relationship between them. Okay, so this is y equals f of x. And this is y equals the inverse of f of x. So you can see its, its domain is from x equals 0 onwards. Okay, and for this one, its range would be the same as the domain of that one. Its range is y is greater than or equal to minus 1. But not, then we're not asked to, to state that, but just for your information, okay, the range of this inverse function is going to be when y is greater than or equal to minus 1. It's going to continue going up that way eventually. And this one here, um, its range is when x is greater than 0, y is greater than 0, same as the domain of this function. Okay, so the, the domain of this function is the range of that function, and the range of this function is the domain of this function, okay, because that's how inverses are related. So the relationship between them in terms of how are they related to each other, okay, the relationship between them is that, that they, are, they are reflections of each other, they are reflections of each other in in the line y equals x. Okay, in y equals x. Okay, so here we have the line y equals x. So the reflections in the line y equals x. And that concludes question uh, number, I think it was number five from the Solomon paper B and question number eight from the endotopic worksheet. Um, I hope you um, understood and I hope um, that if you want to see more questions about uh, this particular topic, you can click on the playlist that's going to appear on this side. If you want to see more questions from this particular Solomon B paper for P3, click on the playlist that will appear here. And you want to see more questions from the endotopic worksheet that I gave on this topic, click on this um, place over here and you can see other p3 kind of uh, material on the card above and you can click on this icon on this side to subscribe to my channel if you wish to do so thank you for watching and i'll see you soon